Victoire, bienvenue. Euh, bienvenue à, pour euh, l'ouverture de cette exposition Yona Friedman, Genesis of a Vision. Euh, le lendemain de la rentrée universitaire, ça fait plaisir euh, de voir euh, le campus se remplir et, euh, et d'ouvrir euh, juste euh, à ce moment-là euh, notre exposition. Bienvenue à tous nos invités qui viennent de France, d'Italie, d'Espagne, qui ont contribué à l'exposition. Il n'y a, a pas de Suisse. D'ailleurs, euh, je crois à ma connaissance que c'est la première exposition de Yona Friedman en Suisse. Poser la question, personne n'a pu me citer une exposition qu'il a faite en Suisse. C'est aussi la première visite de notre conférencier Manuel Orazzi en Suisse, donc ces deux premières Suisses aujourd'hui. Euh, je suis très fier et c'est pas sans émotion que, que j'ouvre cette exposition. Il n'y a pas si longtemps, Nader Serrage, euh, donc c'était à peine euh, il y a 12 mois, euh, il me présentait ce projet en me disant qu'il voulait que ça se réalise rapidement. Euh, notre programme était déjà fait, donc euh, on, a, on a commencé à travailler à une petite exposition qu'on pourrait placer entre deux autres. Et finalement, c'est ce qui s'est fait. Vous voyez que l'exposition ne dure pas très longtemps, jusqu'au 24 octobre. Euh, mais euh, après une ou deux rencontres avec euh, Friedman, euh, l'enthousiasme a fait que c'est devenu quand même une, une grande et belle exposition que vous verrez tout à l'heure. Euh, et heureusement parce que le thème euh, le mérite, les idées de Friedman intéressent aujourd'hui un grand nombre de jeunes architectes qui, qui le découvrent. Euh, je pense que beaucoup d'étudiants ici euh, effectivement découvriront euh, l'œuvre l'œuvre de Friedman à travers cette exposition. C'est en tout cas le but qu'on s'est fixé. Et, euh, mais euh, il, il est effectivement déjà bien connu des, 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 des diplômants de l'EPFL. Euh, m'ont dit avoir été inspiré par Friedman pour leur projet de master qui viennent de terminer. Euh, Friedman est artiste, écrivain, architecte, ingénieur aussi, enfin il a intéressé beaucoup les ingénieurs dans ses recherches, philosophe. La salle Archizoum euh, ne suffirait pas à lui rendre euh, entièrement hommage. Euh, vous verrez les choix qu'a fait euh, Nader Serrage dans l'exposition. Manuel Orazzi euh, nous fera tout à l'heure aussi un tour d'horizon biographique plus détaillé pour cerner cette œuvre d'une vie. Euh, quand je parle de l'œuvre d'une vie, ça peut paraître un hommage posthume, euh, mais ce n'est pas du tout ça. Friedman est encore extrêmement actif. Les images vidéo que vous verrez euh, dans l'exposition ont été tournées le mois dernier. Et euh, s'il ne voyage plus, il a 90 ans cette année, euh, il a encore des projets dans le monde entier et euh, il nous a vraiment prouvé aussi euh, son, la, sa, sa, sa capacité de travail et sa lucidité en, en euh, collaborant pour euh, monter cette exposition. Je vais euh, vous présenter, vous annoncer les conférences qui ont été organisées pendant, pendant le, la durée de l'exposition. Tout d'abord, Juan Miguel Hernandez León. Euh, qui est euh, un architecte, euh, aussi un très important théoricien qui vient de Madrid. Il a été directeur de l'ETSAM à Madrid. Et euh, Dominique Rouillard, une historienne de l'art, euh, qui viendra parler euh, notamment de l'influence de Friedman sur euh, la pensée de, de la ville et des infrastructures. Euh, et euh, bon, puisque vous, vos agendas sont euh, ouverts, euh, je vous annonce aussi le rendez-vous de demain, le best-of. C'est une image de très mauvaise qualité, je suis désolé, mais c'est euh, demain à 6 heures euh, au foyer. On va euh, euh, inaugurer l'exposition des, des travaux d'étudiants. Ensuite, euh, samedi, euh, Archizon participe à la nuit des musées avec une euh, Pecha Kucha. Donc le rendez-vous important est à 20h20 au, au Learning Center avec une série d'invités. Euh, et, euh, et bien sûr des événements, tous les événements qui sont liés à la nuit des musées et les conférences, les prochaines conférences aussi importantes à noter c'est celle de Raoul Merotra le jeudi 4 octobre à 18h30 dans cette salle et euh, Diebedo Francis Kéré qui viendra le 12 octobre au euh, Rolex Learning Center Voilà, je vais passer maintenant euh, la parole tout d'abord à Nader Serrage donc Nader est, est euh, afghan et je ne vois, beaucoup d'entre vous le connaissent euh, déjà parce qu'il a enseigné à l'EPFL, il a étudié à Mendrisio et à la AA School, deux approches euh, très contrastées. 
Et euh, il signe ici sa première exposition. Je le remercie beaucoup. Et sous vos applaudissements, Nader Serraj. Bonsoir à toutes, à toutes et à tous. Bienvenue à cette exposition inédite de Yona Friedman à l'EPFL. L'exposition est principalement organisée euh, sur la base d'un programme et d'une scénographie que nous a proposé euh, Yona Friedman pour euh, la salle Archizoom euh, et pour cette exposition. Le choix et la sélection des œuvres présentées s'adressent précisément aux étudiants, aux chercheurs et aux enseignants en architecture. Euh, donc elle s'inscrit parfaitement dans la pédagogie de l'Institut ENAC, mais aussi s'adresse à un public euh, beaucoup plus large. Le travail de Yona Friedman, en général, est un travail qui est très pédagogique. Il a su développer un langage euh, graphico-expressif à travers ses écrits, sa manière de dessiner et de, et de parler aussi. Et euh, une technique qui est vraiment très propre euh, à, à lui, à son langage, et c'est vraiment sa, sa signature. Euh, je voudrais remercier sincèrement Yona Friedman ce soir euh, pour sa disposition, le temps qu'il nous a donné aussi avec euh, Emmanuel et Giudice. Euh, pour, nous, euh, pour nous transmettre ce soir euh, son travail, ses idées, euh, ses convictions euh, politiques, sociales et euh, ses prises d'opposition euh, en tant qu'architecte. Yona Friedman est pour moi et je pense pour euh, beaucoup de gens parce qu'il arrive vraiment à réunir euh, beaucoup de générations euh, en même temps. Un architecte qui est très polyvalent et, euh, et complet. C'est définitivement un visionnaire euh, positif et euh, je considère son travail et cette exposition comme euh, une leçon. Euh, vous pourrez mesurer par vous-même la réussite de, de cette exposition, mais je la dois vraiment en grande partie à un grand groupe avec lequel euh, j'ai travaillé et euh, c'est vraiment important que, que je les remercie euh, ce soir. Donc premièrement, euh, on a parmi nous euh, Marianne Omeris, qui est venue de Lyon ce soir. Donc euh, Marianne a fondé en 2005 le, le Bureau des Projets. Le Bureau des Projets, je cite, est une nouvelle agence de médiation artistique qui se donne pour objet de réaliser, avec des artistes et des architectes, des projets éphémères et pérennes dans l'espace public urbain, sururbain et rural. Elle a notamment participé à, à, à l'édition des euh, deux livres de Yona Friedman, donc euh, Drawing and Models, de 1945 à 2000, que vous pourrez voir euh, dans la salle d'exposition, et aussi euh, Prodomo, de l'édition euh, Actar. Euh, elle a organisé beaucoup d'expositions, et notamment deux expositions de Yona Friedman. Euh, une s'appelle Avenir de Ville, Future for Cities, et l'autre, Utopias Realizadas, Utopie réalisée. Elle est extrêmement intéressée par euh, la ville spatiale et euh, sa faisabilité, euh, comment elle s'inscrit dans un contexte réel, technique, social, euh, euh, urbain. Je voulais la remercier sincèrement ce soir, personnellement, pour euh, nous avoir prêté son, son archive digitale euh, au complet. Euh, je voulais la remercier pour euh, sa collection de livres que nous avons exposés pour sa disponibilité et ses conseils euh, bienveillants tout au long de la préparation de, de, de l'exposition. Une autre personne qui n'est qui est, qui est pas présente ce soir, mais qui a beaucoup participé aussi, c'est un artiste euh, plasticien français qui s'appelle euh, Jean-Baptiste de Cavel. Jean-Baptiste de Cavel euh, travaille euh, l'image en mouvement et la photographie. Actuellement, il est à New York pour le vernissage d'un travail qu'il organise avec euh, Yona Friedman et euh, beaucoup d'autres artistes résidents, environ 39 artistes résidents. Et le projet s'appelle « Let's Talk Peace, a Dog Republic ». C'est initié par de nombreux artistes, dont, euh, dont Yona Friedman. Et une autre exposition qui a, qui a lieu jusqu'au 28 octobre, qui s'appelle « Architecture Without Building » à la Vlieschal en Hollande. Il a fondé avec Yona le Balkis Island. C'est une île, une topographie imaginaire, qui émerge de l'amitié entre Yona Friedman et Jean-Baptiste de Cavell. Euh, un livre est paru, que vous pourrez aussi voir euh, dans la salle d'exposition, il s'appelle Etc. Euh, Balkis Island. Il a aussi euh, fondé avec Yona Friedman en 2010 à Paris euh, le Balkis Productions, 
C'est une archive euh, open source que vous pourrez voir sur euh, Vimeo. Euh, des dessins animés et des écrits de Jonah Friedman. On en a utilisé certains qu'on a réédités et imprimés et présentés pour euh, cette exposition et qui s'inscrivent parfaitement dans, 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 dans les thèmes qu'on vous propose. Je voudrais remercier sincèrement aussi de nous avoir prêté euh, l'édition 4 des tirages euh, photo noir et blanc d'une série euh, qui s'appelle Iconostase 25 IS et aussi euh, d'un film séquence 9 minutes euh, en noir et blanc euh, de Jonah Friedman qui monte euh, au Art Basel en 2010, euh, la Space Chain à l'échelle 1-1. A l'occasion de, euh, de cette exposition, on a aussi euh, créé, euh, réalisé avec euh, Emanuele et Marc Vincent Kalinka, qui est ici, euh, trois documents audiovisuels euh, très nouveaux. Je voulais remercier très sincèrement euh, Marc Vincent Kalinka pour avoir participé et pour avoir fait euh, euh, ce travail d'édition de, de directeur. Marc Vincent Kalinka est un vidéo artiste d'origine italo-russe. Après avoir travaillé dans la musique et dans le théâtre, il a officiellement débuté sa carrière en tant qu'artiste indépendant en 2005. Il a exposé à la Biennale d'Art de Venise, à l'Imperial Garden of Russia Festival à Saint-Pétersbourg et à la Barbarian Art Gallery de Zurich. On a produit trois différents euh, documents audiovisuels. Le premier, c'est un vidéo interview de Yona Friedman. Donc vous y découvrirez ce qu'il ce qu entend par la dilution de l'architecture, euh, mais aussi des réflexions sur euh, l'Europe actuelle. Euh, le rôle de l'architecte, les projets d'autoplanification et, euh, et euh, il s'adresse directement aux étudiants euh, en architecture. Le deuxième document est une vidéo installation qui s'appelle Be Yona Friedman, que l'on a nommé comme ça. C'est un plan séquence euh, assez long de Yona dans son atelier studio à Paris et euh, la mise en relation entre le, 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 la grande projection de 4 mètres de Yona Friedman dans son espace son son et euh, la vidéo de, de plan très serré du visage de Yona avec l'interview, c'est très intéressant les deux, les deux effets et c'est vraiment ce qu'on voulait, qu voulait, qu voulait faire. Le troisième document, c'est est, est, est une initiative de, de Emmanuel Giudice, c'est en collaboration avec euh, l'ETSAM, l'Escuela Tecnica Superiore d'Architectura de Madrid, où Emmanuel et Giudice euh, font actuellement un doctorat. C'est une conversation... Euh, entre euh, Emmanuel et Giudice, Luis Antonio Gutiérrez Cabrero, Juan Miguel Hernández León et José Miguel de Prada Pool. C'est un document de, de, de très bonne qualité avec un contenu, euh, on va dire, très académique, philosophique, mais vraiment de, de très bon niveau et qui s'inscrit encore une fois parfaitement dans, dans, dans la faculté ANAC. Donc je vous remercie pour ça. J'aimerais remercier l'équipe ArchiZoom, son directeur, Cyril Veillon. Pour, pour, pour sa patience, pour, pour la liberté qu'il m'a donnée aussi. Euh, Luc Pascal, Jean-Robert Gros, euh, tout le comité ArchiZoom, euh, l'équipe de montage qui ont fait vraiment un travail un, impeccable. C'est vraiment important que je puisse les, les remercier. Donc premièrement, c'est Quentin Rosset, Derek Raubach, Jade Rudler, Tim Femme, Michael Saxt, Johan Kossandé. Pour finir, euh, je vais remercier une personne que je n'ai pas eu encore l'occasion de le remercier, surtout pour euh, les deux années de collaboration que j'ai eues avec lui euh, au sein de son laboratoire. C'est le professeur Dieter Dietz. Je m'en remercie sincèrement pour, euh, pour ces deux années et aussi, je m'en aussi sincèrement le remercier pour avoir soutenu cette, euh, cette initiative. Merci beaucoup. Merci, merci Nader. Euh, avant de poursuivre, j'aimerais ai, juste euh, m'excuser pour la, la qualité de, de ce que vous voyez à l'écran. Il y a un problème technique euh, qui, qui empêche de bouger ce tableau. Donc on ne peut pas présenter les PowerPoint euh, plein écran. Euh, donc voilà, il faut faire abstraction un peu de tout le tour. Mais et les images sont plus petites que d'habitude. Donc bien désolé pour ça. Mais euh, Manuel me disait que euh, la... Friedman dit que la technique, euh, qu'est-ce que tu disais de... Pour se bloquer. Voilà, la technologie est faite pour se bloquer. <rire> Donc, euh, c'est 
c'était planifié. Euh, maintenant, je vais passer la parole à, à Emanuele Lo Giudice, euh, qui va intervenir avec Marc, Marc Kalinka. Um, et, uh, so, I have to speak in English, you know, because Manuel, do, uh, doesn't, Manuel doesn't uh, uh, understand French. Manuel is an, is an artist. He studied architecture in Venice. Um, and uh, everybody told me that he, he is a very good, uh, he do very beautiful drawings. Uh, but um, I'm a bit frustrated because in the exhibition you don't see the drawings. He, he's, he, he, was, uh, he, he worked with Jonah Friedman to do the um, street museum. Uh, so I was hoping maybe in the street museum we can see your drawing, but uh, no, the project is totally different. Uh, he will explain uh, his collaboration and his, uh, the relationship he established with uh, Jonah. So please. Thank you very much. It's important that you speak close to the microphone. Okay. This is for the slide. Okay. Thank you very much for staying here. Sorry for my English, because I know that is not so good. <laughs> Sorry. I, um, I met uh, Jonah Friedman in the 19th century, in, um, two, uh, two years ago. And then we started to working about the museum. Uh, today, many contemporary architects have adopted the procedure of fashion, uh, change the architecture into a system of construction for urban. This is a result of a cycle, a process that began in the 90s and today is a theme to me to me to be ending, because this system is exploited exclusively but itself. It is a self-reflection -re and consumerism. Even more, this operation can be summarized as a fact, where new technology can produce something unexpected. But the architecture, is that whole or is something else? One day Friedman said to me, It's nice to change the shapes of the buildings. But it is secondary. You can make a building in the shape of an elephant, for instance. It is very funny in Los Angeles. There was an elephant coffee, and the building was in the shape of an elephant. But this, this is a kind of folklore. And even if it is nice, it's less important than the fashion to wear. I'm not against it, but it is not the central problem of contemporary architectural question, but only a secondary issue. But, but, then, what is the main issue, if not the form? Because sure, the form is not the main problem. Friedman tells us that um, if we think about the museum, we can think that. Anthropologists and archaeologists build up their images and theories about past civilizations through artifacts they find at excavation sites. A half-burnt born at the site of a Neolithic encampment triggers theories about Neolithic lifestyle. Objects found in tombs are the revered treasure of large museum collections. But, as for the real value of these finds for the society that produced them, we can only guess. Let us think about the traces of our civilization, traces that might be found by generations succeeding ours. Could we ourselves prepare these traces, for example, to have the characteristics object accompanied by indication about their contemporary value, by instructions on how they were supposed to be used, by documents enhancing their appeal to a contemporary public? Yes, we could. All this information is contained in shop window displays, price, technical information, advertisement. Shop window displays are museum ready. There is also another advantage for the present. You don't have to pay a ticket to look at such a display, nor go and look during visiting hours. It is open for everybody, day and night, all days of the week. For that kind of museum, there is no necessity to build a specialized building. They don't need heating or weather protection for visitors. You can look at window display uh, using your own umbrella to protect you. But there is one point I have to add to this project. Shop windows generally have an exclusively commercial motivation. Could we also install shop windows for art, for ideas, or for culture? Associated with the merchant's display, for example, convening with shop owners to also present, as a part of their display, works of art, 
cultural manifestation, etc. So, so, a museum is not a building, but uh, is those objects that make a museum. So the larger museum are the cities, are the shop windows. If you look at the shop windows in the street, we can see the real museum of our civilization. We must change the way we see the city. I want to remind everybody the operation that Dadaist made on the April of 1921 in Paris at 2 p.m. using the city as a ready-made operation that has a completely changed the way we see the urban areas and show the city and elaborate a different perspective. This is, this is an important operation because this group does intervene on the landscape, leaving an object or taking a sample of the others, but bring the artist and rather the group of artists directly on the site without performing and material operation and without any kind of processing. The earth under my feet is nothing more than an huge newspaper explained under Breton. Just give him the right to read it. The museum that usually Sorry, eh? Che succede qua? Oh. Come se va indietro qua? Eh, voglio tornare indietro. Sorry, eh? Che eh. <laughs> succede? Eh, passo avanti. The museum that today usually are built look like objects that could be perceived like animals informally. This is who I am. While the shop windows are real, the shop windows are are the form of, of art installation and the windows is a real installation. The largest museum is the city that lives as uh, this it. I think that this spatial pro proportion and temporary measure should be considered together. In operation with this type of we studies Friedman and me in uh, uh, two years ago. I met a Jonah Friedman in the nine uh, twelve um, uh, 21.9 by Manuel Orazzi during my research on the contemporary city and begin of Iona and uh, I started to, uh, to work together and with particular regard to the dam of the museum. At the beginning the project was uh, for Venice with the idea of just using yellow sign. Then for wall range of difficult we have brought the project for, uh, to Perugia, and we have a final result in the 2000 and the evil during the first arc in Perugia. We have also included photos of some personal objects that the people of Perugia have closed and carefully, and then we have exhibited them on the shop windows. So this museum, we have a small toy car So in this museum we have a small toy car made of wood, a notebook and a hat, the glasses, the, the clock, the money, all these objects have one history. At the end of 2000, at 11, a group of merchan merchandise of, of Venice, excited about the project of Perugia, wanted to build one in the street. 
that goes to Venice, Campo Santo Stefano, and Palazzo Grassi. They also formed in the association have uh, guaranteed money but to the lack of the sponsor and difficult and have caused the project to remain unfinished. No, porca miseria di nuovo. This project, in this project you can see the main model about the museum studies from Como, 2004, until that Perugia, 2011. Then, Count the transition may make us think that the museum is basically a social program before the, a building project, the concrete manifestation of trogue and civic existence of the human began as it unfold. I think this uh, kind of operation is possible and archivized. Sorry for my English. Now I leave my No. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was a bit difficult with the picture, so I. Well. Okay. okay. So now um, I pass uh, the floor to Manuel Orazzi. Manuel Orazzi is uh, made. Ah, uh, je peux parler en français d'ailleurs. Manuel Orazzi comprend très bien le français, il va s'exprimer euh, en anglais parce qu'il a plutôt l'habitude de faire des conférences en anglais. Manuel a fait euh, une thèse sur euh, Jonah Friedman euh, et c'est une thèse qui s'est intéressée à la période la moins connue de Friedman euh, en, en Hongrie et euh, en Israël, entre autres. Euh, et, mais on lui a demandé ce soir de venir parler, euh, de faire une conférence euh, vraiment biographique sur l'œuvre de Friedman pour nous faire comprendre l'ensemble... Euh, de ce travail qui, est, qui part dans des directions extrêmement variées. Donc c'est très difficile d'en faire une synthèse. Euh, merci d'avoir accepté l'invitation. Euh, et c'est d'ailleurs Yona Friedman qui euh, a suggéré à Nader d'inviter, euh, de, de vous inviter pour, euh, pour ce soir, pour cette conférence. Merci. Merci à vous. J'avais l'habitude de faire des conférences en italien. Euh, Among the two languages, I decided I spoke uh, less words <laughs> in English, so sorry, I'm going to speak in English. Yes, it's not easy to summarize, to present also the, as you can see in exposition, the big variety of the work of uh, Jonah Friedman. And as he has done uh, very different kinds of activities in his long life and career, And also, as he has lived in uh, so different, such a different place in three continents, because he used to live in in the Middle East, in in, in Europe, and also for for ten years uh, he was much present in the U.S. I decided that the, yes, the bi biographical uh, way to, to 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 introduce him should be the best. Also, because uh, for what I know, um, no, not many students. Uh, knew Jonah Friedman uh, uh, for what I, I've been told in uh, here in Lausanne uh, and, and also be for another reason an Italian philosopher once said that every work is a collective work and to me it's very um, annoying to to see that uh, all the time uh, Jonah Friedman is put together with uh, radical architecture or uh, experimental architecture without considering his uh, experiences and the people and architects he has collaborated in his formative years. So uh, I want to show you very quickly, unfortunately, uh, some of his most relevant uh, personal experiences uh, more than uh, other than his theories. Because I, I think also that theory And practice is a, a very old uh, uh, dialectical couple that should be overcome from uh, 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 another couple, which is reflection and experience, which for me is more productive. Uh, Jonah Friedman was born uh, in Budapest in 1923 in a Jewish family. Uh, he, in the, he, at the time, there were laws against the Jews uh, who, was, um, um, who, was, who 
so for him it was impossible to attend uh, university, but he got a special uh, permission from a teacher, Ivan Kotsis, who was a very traditional teacher at the Polytechnic of Budapest. Um, so he could uh, attend uh, lectures without, uh, without, uh, without having uh, a note. So uh, from, since he was very young, uh, he, he experienced uh, discrimination. Also, uh, Hungary was a very special country because as he was a philo, uh, German, philo yes, in a good relation with Germany, they, there was a kind of regime uh, called fake fascism uh, of the Admiral Horthy. The, the Second World War touched uh, Hungary very late, just in 1944. So until 1944, Hungary was a, a kind of uh, happy island, like Switzerland. Uh, so that uh, uh, Friedman could attend, there were many um, uh, conferences of uh, important intellectuals that only could <laughs> do these lectures during the war only in Hungary and in Switzerland probably. They were, for example, Werner Heisenberg, the, the Nobel Prize for Physics, who, had, uh, uh, who held the two important lectures in Budapest, which the very young Jona Friedman attended, was very important for his, um, for his formative years. Uh, a recent book by him, uh, L'Ordre Compliqué, uh, is completely uh, a, a consequence, still a complete consequence of those two lectures. And then he attended also uh, a course by Karoli Kereni, who also was dead, he used to spend the rest of his life in Ascona, so here in Switzerland, but was very important because it uh, uh, was uh, a course uh, attended by uh, anti, the people anti-regime, obviously, about mythology. And this idea of the mythology as a, a system, uh, something that gives you a complete image of the world, is something that we can, I mean, if you read the, the books that to me are the most precious uh, works by Jona, among the preci most precious works by Jona, you, you can see even in very late, uh, uh, even, the book, if, even if the books have been published very late, you can feel, uh, you can see uh, the, the presence of Kereni and Eisenberg, according to me. Anyway, Friedman, in the 1944, uh, uh, they arrived the Nazi occupation. You know that in Budapest there have been uh, the most quick and biggest uh, deportation of European Jews, like half a million Jews deported in uh, less than two months to the camps. Uh, Eichmann uh, went uh, direct personally to Budapest to organize the last uh, big deportation. And Jona, uh, who at the university was uh, denounced by by one of his friends, students, was uh, uh, taken in prison, not as a Jew, but as a, an ent um, a resistance, uh, I don't know how to say, as an anti-Nazi resistant. So he was uh, imprisoned as a political prisoner. That saved his life, because uh, otherwise he has been sent immediately to the camps. Then, uh, in January, uh, of um, for 1945, this is one of the images, the Russian, the Red Army came to free Budapest, there was, there was a big chaos, and so he had saved his life. But what was, it, apart the, the, the experience of the war, that obviously is important for everybody, uh, is that in, in this uh, little group of resistance, uh, Friedman experienced uh, a very special uh, technique of communication. Uh, that means uh, something that has been uh, done the same way in uh, in, Alger in Algeria, <laughs> in Algeria, <laughs> during the occupation, of, during the the, the, the the freedom of Algeria. That means that every single member of this group could know only two other members, so that if 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 it was if he was uh, captured, he could reveal, he could say the truth, but it was impossible to, to have a complete vision of the group. So this also has, was very relevant. This, um, he had, how can I say, a very uh, realistic, very concrete uh, experience of communication, which also another big theme of his work.
Anyway, after the freedom of Hungary, he decided to go, to go away from Hungary because he was very delused from this, the experience of discrimination and also the collapse of a whole so society. Also, he was very, of course, uh, bittered by no, the denunciation of a friend. Uh, he waited one year in Bucharest, in Romania, because from, um, from Bucharest it was uh, more easy to, to get to Palestine. The, the Zionist International Agency was based in, in Bucharest. He had to, to, to wait one year and he experienced uh, what it means to be a, um, a refugee. When you are in a destroyed city after the war, you understand what you need the most in the for the first time. And what you need the most uh, when you are a refugee in a destroyed city is water. And then you experience life uh, with other people inside the same room, with other family, many families. And here he, he had the, his first ideas of mobile furnitures uh, to, to, to for keeping a little privacy between, uh, and mobile furnitures also too, because every day were coming other people in this kind of context. So it was, uh, but he, I mean, he was very young. Finally, in 1946, he, um, he could get to Haifa in, in Palestine at the time because we, there was still the, the British uh, uh, occupation, of, uh, there was the British uh, mandate uh, of Palestine. But, and Haifa is a very special city in Israel now at the time Palestine because it's the more mixed city. It's also the most liberal. It was called at the time uh, Haifa the Red, if you see the last Amos Gitai film about his father, Ven Munio Venra Gitai, who was an ex Bauhaus student, he just, was just presented now at the Venice Film Festival uh, this month. Uh, you will see that, so my, that how special was this city. Um, and of course, uh, there was this context uh, unique because uh, every single day were arriving Jews from Europe with uh, with uh, destroyed boats uh, all the boats um, by the way were were <laughs> leaving from italy from genoa or from trieste uh, they were passing from europe to to palestine that was forbidden from uh, the, from england because the, there was already problems with the arab population as it's well known uh, this is the famous uh, very well known boat uh, exodus which was taken, they were all survived from, the, from Auschwitz. They were, the, the, this boat was taken back to, to Italy, to Cyprus, and then to Italy. Uh, it's very famous. But anyway, this was the landscape of uh, the periphery of Haifa. Every single day were coming immigrants. And Israel, in the very first years, was really unique because it's the only country based on immigration. Uh, if you come to Switzerland, <laughs> like, like me for the first time, I'm ashamed for this, but uh, this today I had, I mean, there was a black man inside of me was taken away from the train. And also I had problems because I couldn't find my ID and so on. Okay. Double checking. I mean, there is no country founded on immigration. This is the point. And this, of course, uh, gives you a very special and unique uh, context because well, uh, as Friedman said, it uh, was uh, very, very close to a classless so society the very first year of Palestine. You know that in Palestine, it was the, 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 the Jews who went to, to Palestine from the very, the, the first Zionist had uh, in architecture in the 20s and the 30s uh, was prevailing the idea of the Garden City, of course. Uh, this is the famous, the first Meshavim designed by the the German architect uh, Richard Kaufmann, Naalal, who ex already exists, um, and Friedman had uh, in Haifa had also a, big uh, a quick experience of living in a, in a kibbutz, which was something very close to a, uh, a form of uh, realized communism. You know that in some kibbutz, with many differences, in some kibbutz, the son, the children, of the people in the kibbutz, there was no property, personal property, but the, in some kibbutz, the children were in common. I mean, you, 
your child, they, their children were they were cared and kept from everybody, but there was no relation with uh, with, with dad and uh, and, uh, and mom. So, I mean, very different, so uh, uh, radical experience. Uh, this is the Technion, the Polytech, another Polytechnic in Haifa, where Friedman f finished his studies in architecture. He got his degree, but he got his degree in. Uh, he had to stop another time in studies after Budapest because uh, um, because in 1948 uh, there is the war of independence of Israel. This is the declaration of independence in 1948 with uh, David Ben-Gurion in the center. This is Theodor Els, uh, as you know, the, the, the theorician of, uh, of Zionism, which is another big ideology of 20th century. That's, uh, we always remember fascism that we Italian invented, communism, uh, but uh, <laughs> there is also Z Zionism. Uh, so um, Friedman has this experience to design trenches. He, has to de he had to design trenches in the, in the engineer corps. And designing trenches is a very special, again, experience, because trenches move. Uh, it's, it's not like architecture. And if you have to design something that moves, you need other instruments to design that. You cannot design it as a building, as a house, as a museum. You have to design with new instruments. For example, diagrams. The, 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 the so celebrated diagrams, no? So, uh, until a few years ago uh, from, uh, from Dutch architects. But of course, as everybody knows, diagrams is a form of representation who's coming from uh, war, for the war experience, from the war technique. And after this other work, um, uh, but then the war was very quick. Uh, Friedman in 1949 had got his degree finally and uh, started collaborating uh, with the architecture faculty in Haifa, where there were very interesting architect teachers. For example, Alexander Klein who was Russian, worked a lot in Germany, wrote important books, uh, had contacts with the first CM. Uh, this is, he got, wrote. Uh, two important books. Uh, in this is a very well-known um, uh, um, representation of movements inside uh, stereotyp inside special specific typologies of building, movement inside the, the rooms, the space, the internal space, uh, and also little diagrams of uh, always of movements, of possible movements. So this was Klein at a certain point uh, in the first it became the dean also of, uh, of the architecture faculty. These are very, the, we have al almost nothing of Friedman from those years, from the drawing, he, he lost all, all, almost everything. We have just a few uh, drawings that I think he, he has redone uh, just after he arrived in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Paris. He, he, he does a lot to redesign his drawings. Um, these are prefabricated uh, elements in uh, concrete uh, with different... Uh, these, these are came from the Getty archive who recently bought a big part of uh, Friedman's uh, archive. Uh, mm, and these are pictures of the model. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the element is always the same. It's just one. And prefabrication, of course, was the, the, the biggest theme, the most important theme in the teaching in Technion, because it was obvious. You had the, the, the necessity of uh, building prefabricated building for immigrants arriving every single day. And also, then, then after moving from the other cities or the new cities that Israel was building at the time for immigrants, because we were a pretty new country, um, the idea of the prefabricated uh, shed uh, arrived to Friedman uh, one day seeing a pipe, an abandoned pipeline along uh, out of Haifa, uh, very big in concrete. He said, let's, let's cut this pipeline, let's do prefabricated building, temporary housing, uh, let's recycle it. 
let's and then let's do it for temporary building. This is a page from the very first edition of L'Architecture Mobile, which is his manifesto, but he, this we have to, before La Ville Spatiale, which is his most known project, uh, there, is, there is this uh, interest in prefabrication and in recycle also of uh, con simple concrete elements, which was something uh, totally in line for with those years. Think about in Russia, the big countries, uh, but uh, apart the fact that the prefabrication has always been the constant temptation and dream of modern architecture, but never, never uh, really uh, <laughs> realized. Uh, this is a picture of the very young Yona, uh, out of a social housing he had the chance to, to realize in Haifa, with the, the Golda Meir, who at the time was the um, minister of... Um, of public public working, I mean, of uh, uh, you know, for the yes, yes, this uh, operative. Th th there is this uh, this story that uh, she went in out rating the, so the social housing and say, okay, let's open a window there. Dice, why? I, I I know we have to open a window there. She, and Friedman say, no, but they should be the inhabitants who decide where the window <laughs> open, not you, the uh, minister just arrived five minutes ago. You remember at the time, there was no formal uh, relationship between people. They, everybody in Israel was calling by name, because there were very few. So Golda, so they were all the same in the army, you know, it was really a classless, or something like a classless society. Um, and these are other projects he, he was doing in those years. They are all done after uh, he went to Europe, but these are always uh, concrete elements. Uh, these, are the, these images are, are just decoration, simple decoration of the facade. I'm showing this because uh, it's already, this is later, because it's very naive, the drawing, no? It has nothing of technique. It's really just a very, very naive representation, intentionally naive. Uh, but they are concrete boxes, one, uh, one over another, simply. So also quite simple, primitive technology. Um, okay, this is Gropius and this is Conrad Waxman. Um, in 1953, in the Technion, is a visiting professor, Con Conrad Waxman, who, as you know very well, was a very, uh, yes, uh, like um, pioneer in prefabrication in the 20s. Uh, Waxman at the time, w in the 40s, went uh, late 30s, uh, when uh, joined Gropius in Harvard in America, they started together a company <laughs> called uh, uh, pa the Panel Company. They were wor working on this uh, project of uh, uh, panels that could be joined uh, in serial, uh, and, and so a very, there are very nice, amusing uh, pages of Rainer Banham about this uh, big failure. But what was important in at the time, in '53, that just two years before, uh, Waxman had the chance to design these big hangars for the U.S. Uh, uh, Army aviation. And when you have to do uh, hangars for B-52s, the biggest uh, planes uh, ever built, uh, you need a lot of space and also you need to close it. So you have to, for closing, you use the, the panel technology, but you have these prefabricated uh, structures with a single element, always the same, repeated. So <coughs> what he was showing were different kind of projects. These are coming from the Waxman book, but I mean, um, it's, it's interesting because um, it was shocking for Friedman because he said, okay, this, this is l'architecture mobile. What if we put uh, boxes, houses, on the top of these structures for mobile and temporary housing in, in, uh, in Israel? So he, he had this uh, very important meeting with, uh, uh, with Waxman, who, by the way, was, was really in the, in the first 50s, was uh, going around the world with his ideas, having uh, a big, uh, a big, uh, a very big uh, attention in any kind of context. You know, uh, Waxman uh, based uh, all of his technology. Now, 
we have to be quick about the, the, the central core of his uh, work was the joint, the joints, who has the, a big die effect. They were very complicated, very, you have to be very, very extremely precise in the montation for what, what I know. So that's, that's also why sometimes it, they didn't, <laughs> often they didn't work. Uh, but they were very different, many kinds of joints. In these joints, uh, also this technique, well, the 50s, uh, there was this in huge rhetoric on technology, which was uh, something like a faith also, something to believe in. From as it is possible, we can do ev anything. Um, the, the year after he was visiting professor in, uh, in, techni in uh, Haifa, Wachsmann was invited by the young... Uh, architect working in the Kenzo Tange studio in, in, in Tokyo to make uh, a course. A course who was attended by uh, Kurokawa and the, young, uh, the very young Arata Isozaki. That means the metabolist. You know that in 1960 Kenzo Tange, the famous uh, plan for the Tokyo Bay by, by Kenzo, the Kenzo Tange studio, where inside there were all the the young uh, metabolist architect, and the young metabolist architect, Isozaki quickly split the group. But if you see the first project of Arata Isozaki, the city in the air, uh, they are very, which are also different, but they are very, very close to the, pre the first projects by Jonah Friedman. We don't care who if they know each other or if they influence it. It is a fact that after having this contact with Waxman, everybody in many, many architects tried to apply the, the, the principle of Waxman in different ways, which in the end were quite similar. Uh, and also we have just the first separation no, from the skeleton, a structure, a solid structure, and capsule, uh, mobile, lit or little uh, units that you can inside the skeleton. Uh, Okay, of course Isozaki had already this uh, like uh, postmodern image of a ruin of the megastructure, <laughs> the first megastructure, and there are other projects by, of course, the other metabolists with the same uh, principle. Okay, I don't want to to to, to lose that. This is Kurokawa showing it. Of course, uh, we we there are uh, previous experience, you know, in uni in small. Uh, uh, houses prefabricated that could work as single elements repeated and, and put inside these big structures. Uh, I want to be quick because I don't want to be too much in the sky. They are, they are in England, of course, uh, in, in the US. Uh, Breuer was Hungarian, by the way. Uh, there are also in, in France, the less known uh, uh, Cabine Hotelier in 1956 by Lionel Shane, um, maybe it was Romanian, this is, but this is in plastic, uh, like the House of the Food, this is another one, in, always in plastic, in 1956, uh, which is a, a K year for architecture culture, but surely for Friedman, because it's the year, oh, okay, then there is the fundamental uh, Maison de Jumier de l'Abbé Pierre by Jean Prouvé. Fundamental because uh, there is, yes, this, uh, you know, that this famous sentence by Le Corbusier. Fundamental because the first uh, personality that Friedman met uh, in, in Paris is Jean Prouvé. Jean Prouvé at the time, in 56, he has his, uh, like uh, Waxman and Gropius, has his own personal company producing, he's trying to commerce uh, prefabricated houses and elements for, uh, uh, for building. So he was extremely interested, not in the megastructure, but in the prefabricated elements, the cylindrical shelters, that kind of, the small units he was interested. That's why the, the, the connection with the Prouvé comes. But 1956 is also the year of Dubrovnik. is the very year when Friedman leaves Israel, which he was no more, uh, he had not the possibility to, to keep his uh, studies inside the Technion, uh, because the new dean uh, didn't want to him it was Alfred Neumann was a, a formalist. Uh, this, the, this is not architecture. What you're talking about, mobile? Yeah, this is not architecture. Uh, you, 
forget it. So he went, he went to the Sia, not as an invited, but as many architects, young architects went to see it. The last Sia, because this the Sia in Dubrovnik is the one where the think tank came out. This is a picture of Alison Smithson. Um, um, and he always said, uh, Friedman, that he was, shot, he was very hit by, not for what he found, but, uh, but from what he didn't found. That <laughs> means uh, the role of inhabitants. There were the, the first uh, problems with the Smithson and the Team 10. They were different. But he had a very good uh, mm, acceptance, for especially from German architects. And the very first article published in Europe by Jonah Friedman was published in Bauwelt in 1957. Uh, then he went in Germany to the Interbau, he met Fraiotto, uh, he decided to collect his theories in this uh, special publication, which, this is the, which is La Architecture Mobile, which was not a book, was simply a collection of article essays, he, he has done uh, like six editions, all the time uh, it was uh, enriched with other text, with other uh, text techniques, uh, the, the last part was always techniques to demonstrate that it was possible. And so it was like a Samizad publication, something that was circulating among architects, uh, just polycopier uh, fo in photocopy, in, in more copies, I know, in, in almost uh, it, simply like this. It's uh, like a ghost book, but it very important. Everybody knew about uh, this publication. It, it, it is not the only way. The metabolists did the exactly the same. They did not a book. They did a publication like this, Metabolist 1960. Anyway, this was done in the first edition at the end uh, in 1958, and then other edition. This is one of his first projects for the Bercy market in Paris, where they plan to destroy it completely. He said, "Let's keep the existing building. Let's build over it." And if you see the first project. Uh, it, it's not still the Ville Spatiale, it's something uh, very close in a way to the Smithson project for Berlin, even if it's always very naive, very simple, the, the project. It's like just a draft. It's not uh, uh, completely developed. This is a page from uh, this, uh, this uh, publication, which a pity has never been published, and maybe it's an idea, it's not a long page, it's an idea to, to make a reprint, it is in French, that's why an idea I would like to provoke uh, the Akizun Gallery, why not uh, reprint it? Um, but here you find uh, in these principles, uh, very simple, you find also the, 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 the Friedman is still in line with the, modern, uh, with the modernist uh, thinking, because uh, he proposed to do a, a city like uh, Venice, like a modern Venice, where the, 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 the the automobile are divided, the, um, di divided from the Pieton. Come, come. Vabbè. Pieton. <laughs> the, the, this Le Corbusier, no? Uh, urbanism. Uh, cioè la, la difference, no? L'automobile, la, la, c'è le mal. Uh, vabbè. You can, of course, you, you can read it, but this is very clear to me, no? very simple, very naive, uh, again, uh, with this idea of uh, horizontal and vertical uh, uh, elevators. And at the end here should be left all the, the cars, of course. These are the first projects, uh, 1958, in 1958, by the way, starts also in Paris. He decided to, to, to stop in, uh, in, uh, in Paris. And uh, little by little, the, the theory and also, and also the variation from l'architecture mobile to la ville mobile and then uh, to la ville spatiale and l'urbanism spatial. It is a tridimensional uh, uh, urbanism. It's this idea of, uh, mega of completely deeply of the of mega structure, we, which at the time was already uh, international, even if Jona Friedman is really among, really among the first, the very first uh, uh, example. In, in a few years, in a couple of years, it came out, uh, the, 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 it's very quick, the maturation of, the, of this uh, theory. And um, OK, here are still uh, the elements, uh, study on the elements uh, 
to put inside the, the buildings. <coughs> and this is a very simple scheme, you know, one, two, uh, three, four, and five. From, uh, from uh, l'architecture mobile, this was the, the pre-modern architecture, modern architecture, Le, Corbu Le Corbusier, very, very naïf Le Corbusier, l'architecture mobile, la ville spatiale. So this is uh, a scheme, these are okay. I have to be very quick, I'm sorry. These are drawings from uh, the MoMA, New York. And again, it's still very, very naive uh, in the representation. This is one of his first maquettes. This is uh, the frac in Orléans, uh, done with very simple piece of wood. It's, I think, in, in, a, in a regular university, you will be very not approved to do a <laughs> maquette like this, still now. Uh, and this one very simple, uh, no? Um, yes, Bloc en les jambes, the, the, uh, 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 in the beginning was called like this, this, this idea no? of Bloc uh, going on, to on the city. This is a project for Tunis, where he, again, he, he, Tunis, the, all the project is proposed to destroy more or less the, the Medina, to make tabula rasa. And it's strange to see you know, how these uh, more, uh, in a way, radical uh, architects to, who, who love so much the existing architecture, you know, on the contrary of the modern, more traditional figures of architects who are um, always more destructive than the radical architects. Uh, in 1959, by the way, he, he has um, a little anticipation of the Tokyo Bay, even if it's quite... Uh, uh, ridiculous, but <laughs> in the sense that he made this project for Mu for Monaco, for Monaco, he proposed that they were Monaco had this problem of congestion, and to at the time there were many competitions to to find solution to go on the sea to expand in, because of the way this place of Monaco is done. He proposed to to build buildings on the on the port, and uh, it's basically it's the idea of the Tokyo Bay. Always, we don't care about influence, uh, but connection, there were surely connection. These are the original um, panels of uh, the Ashid uh, Mobile that now are at the Bobourg. They are online. You can see it uh, on the internet, on the Santa Pompidou website. And you can see it, it really seems like uh, 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 ch children sketches, children, because since those years, the years of the GEAM uh, group uh, d'études de l'architecture mobile with uh, other uh, architects uh, not well known uh, uh, who were around him, but not very relevant, also from France, from Germany, from Luxembourg, from other places, Friedman this, uh, this is a principle should be adopted from other architects and other uh, people, and then realized this was... Uh, the idea. So they are really very much projects we're developing with uh, until, you know, um, yes, this is a picture of uh, one of the many meetings by uh, Jeanne. This is where in Holland, this is Constant, who at the time was working on his, his own uh, utopian city, as you know. Um, but the, and this is uh, a project by Schulze Filitz, a German architect who was in connection with the Jam. It's uh, interesting to me the, the clash between Friedman and Constant because uh, he, he, he told him, he told him, he said, I don't agree with uh, your utopian city because, because uh, you cannot play for, uh, it's, it should be not obligatory to play every day, because, you know, the game was the only and main uh, aim of the constant city. What is it called now? I'm sorry, I have uh, now forgetting the name of this um, New Babylon. In New Babylon, as you know, it was a city going around the, 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 the landscape, the city, the, uh, etc., where you, you, the only thing you could do inside was game, playing, playing games. And Freeman said, okay, but you can play it only if you want. 
it should not be obligatory like in your <laughs> vision. Uh, okay, the, the idea of megastructure, and so also the Ville Spatiale too, uh, started uh, working around, working around, in a way, in all the, the con possible contexts, the natural, urban context, uh, such as all the, the main, uh, the main um, other megastructures project. Uh, this is one uh, redone no, uh, idea of uh, Vilspatial over the Seine uh, river, uh, which is something in this case, but there is no co really no connection with, <coughs> with Super Studio, of course, but it's uh, these are other shocking projects to me, negative, positive, uh, on the Champs-Élysées, uh, um, which is one of my favorite, I have to say. <laughs> uh, these are also the, the big empty space over the, the big uh, railway stations, who in Paris are many. And Paris still, until the first 60s, have huge problems of... Uh, of uh, lack of uh, um, of buildings of houses for people because there was uh, people coming into uh, La Pierre was working on this uh, emergence until the first 60s. So I want to say that it, it was a general feeling of uh, of necessity and also there was this new fear of uh, of the um, predictions pre 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 mm, say of um, demographists. They were thinking that the world was about to uh, explode in a very few decades. Until the, so there was no space uh, for all the people. So there were also this kind of, uh, of preoccupation at the time. Um, the, then the Ville Spatiale has taken a specific form present also in the exhibition, which is the Ville, the Ville, Pont, Ville Pont, the, the, um, yes, the city bridge. <laughs> uh, and remember that the mega structure, the book uh, by Renner Banham on mega structure, starts with a picture of Ponte Vecchio in Florence, which is an inhabited structure. No, uh, there was one uh, the same in Paris that has been destroyed in, in, in the centuries. But this is the idea of a big ville, uh, uh, ville pont uh, over the um, was unifying uh, France and uh, and England. Uh, okay, Ponte Vecchio, and these are there. There is a, a series of uh, projects like this, which in the end were the same were idea of uh, the um, the Tokyo Bay Plan. There were other projects, for example, Luigi Pellegrini, an Italian not very known uh, architect, and also about the capsule. Of course, as you know well, there were. Um, also, the in those in the 60s is are uh, the, the the decade of the uh, of um, the run to the moon to the space uh, um, missions, and of course there are the, the idea of megastructure is was going on uh, very quickly. What, uh, which are the the the, the four uh, characteristics of megastructure? Um, the modular system. The possibility of uh, an unlimited growth, uh, a structural skeleton with uh, l more little capsule inside, and uh, the last one is the, the the skeleton lasts longer than the capsule, and so that are the characteristics that can put together many of the ex the, the mega structure projects that you know very well. Also, you have to remember that Moshe Safti was born in Haifa, uh, and the first, and he has, of course, a copy of uh, La Chiretour Mobile. And by the way, these are uh, concrete boxes, one on over another. Mm, there is, <laughs> I mean, with something, uh, ideas, uh, you know, are also thanks to magazines, are very quick uh, to, to expand. And the 60s uh, were like this, also in the... After the mm, Friedman closed the GM in 1962, because he found that the, the other members has no personal ideas, they were all more or less doing his own. Uh, in 1965, uh, he's born a very different group, uh, very bigger and more heterogeneous, uh, led by Michel Ragon, who was a kind of futurologist and the historian of the group. 
there was uh, Le Visionnaire de l'Architecture uh, was a book <coughs> done in 1965 when the book uh, starts and these are other protagonists with crazy, Walter Jonas was Swiss, was Swiss I think, uh, was a painter these are the projects of a painter who contacted an engineer uh, person, there, there is a funny book say, okay, you see, it's possible, let's do it it's simple uh, this kind of uh, 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 yes <laughs> of, uh, uh, of settlements and this is Paul Maimon which was a French architect who lived uh, uh, for many years in Japan, so in contact with the metabolist, and this is just the contrary, reverse project also there is this uh, uh, interesting project for uh, expansion of the city downstairs <laughs> in the ground uh, under the Seine River with uh, public building, pu public spaces, uh, shops, etc. Nicolas Schoffer was a sculptor, so it's something different from the jam, uh, a sculptor uh, un of Hungarian origins with this kind of project with uh, tower full of lights and music uh, think about uh, the, <laughs> the impact uh, on a city uh, and these are where the dy dynamic sculptures moving sculpture um, and this idea of living in capsule of course was uh, explored in many ways think about this is a, a film by 1968 uh, the capsule uh, are, you know uh, look this, if you look this image they were um, very sm very small you think that the, it just in, in the same year they are realized in Japan uh, on the only famous building by Kurokawa uh, in 1970 uh, in uh, the Oxpo in Osaka um, it's a kind of turning year in the sense that uh, the Japanese uh, demonstrates that they build a megastructure for the exhibition. So a temporary megastructure. This is the funny thing. Because it was uh, very tall with uh, this big hole inside, a sculpture inside, and, and in the roof of, the me of this megastructure there were all the projects by the architects invited. And there is a picture, I couldn't find it, I'm sorry, but it has been uh, published in the book by Colas uh, on the Project Japan where there are invited all the European uh, architects, uh, Anson Line, Archigram, Jona Friedman, uh, De Carlo, they are invited and, and then there are all the Japanese, you see, we did it. <laughs> you, you are thinking we did it. It's quite shocking to me because uh, it's something like, uh, mm, mm, yes, it's it, it's uh, the first uh, maybe the first uh, sorry, it's a way when an European theory European ideas that have been realized uh, very far from Europe it's, it will be just one of the first cases now there are many other cases uh, uh, in uh, in um, it happened again uh, many ways uh, in 1970 Friedman collects his writings for the first time in La Cité Tour Mobile. Uh, the, this is the French edition, this is the Italian edition, um, and it's a kind of end of this uh, period. Of him. From, from the 70s on, he has a, a kind of change. From one side there has been then, the, of course, the first big uh, economical crisis. From one side, uh, uh, because of the oil war, the Kippur war, uh, you know, you know the, the, the years where there were no oil in, in Europe, everybody has to go <laughs> by, um, by feet, on feet, on foot. Uh, and also, the first big economical crisis was very shocking for all these dreams of infinite expansion of cities uh, in, uh, in a, a megastructure. From the other side, also, the cultural landscape changed a lot. As you know, in 1966, two fundamental books uh, were published by, at the time, were not very much uh, noticed, from, especially the Aldo Rossi, the architecture of the city, but also <coughs> complexity and contradiction in architecture by Robert Venturi, where, <coughs> where she had two books <coughs> completely moved the attention, focused the attention on other aspects of architecture, and uh, they were more, mm, okay, um, so for me this is a turning point because s as it happens all often when you 
realize something is also the, the end of, the, of something. And also we have to say, uh, in, in the same year came out this book, uh, the second book by Peter Cook, uh, Experimental Architecture. Friedman, in fact, has been the daddy of the megastructure. We can move across any kind of terrain, which is this like, sentence quite, according to him, uh, very, very clear. And the book by Banham say, in, in Banham in a, in a meeting in Naples in 1972, he said, mass structure is dead. He, he decided it was dead in 1972, even if the book was published a couple of years later. Uh, this is a famous project by Paul Rudolph, by the way. Think about to build the uh, buildings uh, over a big auto route uh, in Manhattan. Think about living inside what could be now to think. Um, and Friedman changed um, changed completely also his kind. He had many different um, new activities. And in a way, he left uh, traditional architecture, he surely left uh, the megastructure work. Um, this book, uh, uh, Feasible Utopias, to be realizable, was published in French in 1974. Um, it's a complete different book. Uh, architecture is a very lateral subject of the book. It's a book about society, mostly. It's a book uh, and about communication. Uh, he understood that only the failings of his, uh, of his uh, megastructure period was based on the failing of communication, of explaining or making explain clearly how it was uh, possible and necessary to do that kind of projects. So in he moved, uh, not, not immediately, but uh, in a few years, he moved from technology, from uh, sophisticated, at the time, uh, technologies, to poor techniques. He started working with the United Nations and UNESCO for many programs uh, of uh, auto-construction, of do-it-yourself built. He, he did a series of manuals that I'm very glad that there is this beautiful uh, uh, exposition of all of Friedman books. So in just with one site, you can see also the evolution of, uh, of Friedman, yeah, the, how they are different, uh, the books. And this is a very, but this is one of, to me, um, feasible. I invite you to, to, to discover this book that to me remains the most important. Um, because uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's an autocritic. And uh, as, a, as an autocritic, uh, uh, there are no, no quotation of authors. I mean, it's a very honest book, uh, where he starts a new production of concepts. He's, I mean, uh, his architecture became more and more conceptual, in a way. Uh, concept like the critical group, which, uh, which means that uh, over a certain dimension of a group, uh, communication is impossible, become impossible. So it's uh, a complete, um, um, it's saying the contrary of what everybody see, thinks about the global communication, uh, the, which also is a myth uh, that was born in the 60s, the, the years of McLuhan, but also the idea of web was starting going very quick from the 60s. So. Um, it's very difficult for me to, <laughs> to stop the, 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 the lecture here because, uh, but I also it's uh, right in this way because in a way my lectures stop where the exhibition begins and also where, but also when his books was, uh, begin because it, his real books more are, was, I mean, thought as books, not a collection of writings. Start from the 70s, when in mm, essentially a, a abandoned architecture, started thinking about sociology um, and other topics. But what, the, what to me is most important is, is um, that Jonah Friedman is um, a producer of concepts, concepts that may, may, might be used by mm -hmm. other people, not only architects. And this is a uh, very rare nowadays, which theory is uh, quite abandoned by architects, uh, prefer to do other things, uh, communication uh, uh, in general. Because concepts, uh, okay, producing concepts should be uh, the aim of philosophers. And 
as nowadays even philosophers have stopped to do theories to produce concepts, but they are all commenting histories or commenting other. Um, the best uh, concepts uh, like uh, street museum and other many other uh, works uh, often comes from uh, strange figure, intellect, strange intellectual figures like Friedman, who it's very also difficult to catch, I mean, in one, just one, okay, we are architects, we are interested in architecture, but, you know, there is the Lord Compliqué, which is a book about physics and the image of the world, which is a, a complete other story, which is a pity, um, a pity um, that I invite you to discover, and that I, um, what, but last thing I would like to say is this one, that the big dimension, uh, the bigness, in a way. You know that in bigness, uh, by Colas, the only architect quoted and criticized is Jonah Friedman. It's very funny, that sentence. I invite you to, to, to find it. Uh, he says, uh, Ville Spatiale never came down, never touched the ground. Uh, that uh, was something working, uh, uh, going up uh, in, in, the, in the sky, but never came down. But if you think to, to the um, project by Lisitsky, or this uh, rape project by Lazar Hidekel, who was a Russian actor. This is a project by 1927, which, he, which is really l'architecture mobile. This is La Ville Spatiale, <laughs> 50 years before. Um, or you think also proje some project by Joseph Van, Van Unterglo, the, the Dutch uh, sculptor of the Steyl. Uh, you think that this kind of project have been present since the roots of modernism. It was not completely new. It has been present already in the roots of modernism. And if you think uh, of this kind of project, of Le Corbusier, who has always been the real model for Jonah Friedman, uh, this is what he always said, and also you have to say for his generation, he always been, you know, was the model for the Team 10. It was not paradoxical. Le Corbusier was among the masters that the Team 10 criticized, but he was the model for the Team 10. No? This was, but also for Friedman and the megastructure architects. So we see that there is a connection to the very roots of, of modernism. And, um, and I thank you very much for the attention. <laughs> I'm sorry for the time. No, thank you very much. Uh, it was really interesting. Now, um, I think we, c we will, uh, well, I have seen the exhibition already, so I will re reread, uh, je vais la revisiter uh, avec ce background très, très intéressant. Merci beaucoup. C'est tout à fait juste que uh, ce que tu as expliqué là, um, dans le fond, um, fait, le, fait, fait vraiment uh, le prépare le terrain pour comprendre l'exposition et d'ailleurs le discours est repris par Friedman dans la vidéo qui a été produite spécialement pour l'exposition où maintenant Friedman euh, explique lui-même ses concepts donc euh, on va aller découvrir ça peut-être je vais laisser si tu es d'accord euh, euh, la possibilité à quelqu'un de poser une question ouais. plusieurs questions si quelqu'un a besoin de précision oui Uh, hello, Manuele. I'm a Spanish uh, doctorand that is doing also a thesis on Jonah Friedman, especially on La Ville Spatiale. And uh, it's a... Uh, well, here there's a very young architect, and I would like just to... Uh, just to tell them how... Because we see La, La Ville Spatiale, like, uh, or the work of early works of Jonah Friedman, like something uh, utopic or like works of megastructures, what were doing these people that were doing things in the air. But uh, uh, I think uh, that there, there, there is like a sew, a semilla, a sem I, I don't know, it's uh, like the trigger, in fact, is the trigger, in fact, of a lot of uh, views of exploration uh, for the future. So it's like uh, at the moment that was all very confused, there was utopic, control topic, but for example, Jonah Friedman um, spoke of participation. So in his Bill Spatial, he was, it was very important that this was, was already made by the people. 
And I just want, want to souligner, je ne sais pas comment, comment on dit, that, uh, for example, just to, to, to give something uh, for young people that now maybe uh, how, how far gone are gone the lines of Jonah Friedman, that, for example, there was another architect at the time, a little after, it was uh, John Habraken, and he's, he started with this Uh, theories of support that was at the very start of, it was very very related to Friedman but he continued in a way of uh, researching and now in the 90s there, there have been produced buildings uh, for example of uh, dwelling in which um, the architect uh, does, on, does only uh, the, su the support the structure and it was it is another ar architect who take Um, the responsibility of uh, making each uh, part of the building. I just want to put an example and, and um, to, to, to give a line to, to let people know that, uh, that these things that seem so utopic now are being some, somehow less radically but have been influenced from the very start and these very great uh, architects, not only Jonah Friedman, Uh, well, I, I'm supposed to give a question, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I will imagine an answer. <laughs> no, the, we have a big problem. The, we have a big problem because megastructure have not, haven't been realized. And also we have a big, another bigger problem with participation, which, uh, which is the definition of the participation from one side. From the other side, Participation is, you are right, is uh, really uh, the fil rouge of all uh, work by Jonah Friedman, crossing the megastructure and utopia realizable, for example, and everything he does. What is participation? Uh, it's difficult. I mean, we, there are many definitions, but uh, you have to, uh, okay, the definition is one, and also there is another aspect that not all the people wants really to determine, to, to define their houses, their houses, their public, their, their spaces. There is people who is not interested in uh, participate in, the, in your own building. This is something you have to consider. Also we can speak about Giancarlo De Carlo and the Terni experiment, which is a book that uh, is an important essay, the only intelligent, clever essay on participation to me is the one by Giancarlo De Carlo published in Australia in 1972 um, so there is in English is the architecture of participation and the same De Carlo tried to do participation on town, um, town planning and in architecture in Rimini and Terni were both failures uh, he realized immediately in Terni that the workers from uh, interni, wanted, when he made the, the meetings with the people, he, he realized immediately if he was asking them, how do you want your apartment? They want the apartment, the same apartment of the, of the doctor, of the quarter. So a very banal, horrible uh, <laughs> apartment of a doctor uh, in the province. So You, uh, it is very clear in this, you have, uh, I mean, the architect uh, surely is not a tradition, so it has to be a, an active role, in, 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 uh, but surely never should be um, accepting all the question and the, the, all the, the how, do, how can I say, sorry, <laughs> little tired. The architect will, will never accept all the, the, the exigence of the inhabitants because the, in many cases they, they give, gives you from, they, has they don't, there is also a psychological as, aspect inside. Um, Architect has, must be a coordinator. Uh, surely he thinks uh, uh, for a new role. Jonah Friedman is more radical in this way. He's like a fundamentalist of participation. And that's why also, uh, to me, he could be criticized. In, uh, in, uh, so participation is a big problem. So good luck for your <laughs> thesis. Thank you very much. Um, this, uh, you, I don't know if, uh, if anybody... But please, uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. No, keep it's, uh, it's, studying. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's my it's my opportunity. <laughs> I don't see you, so so uh, so you you, you said a very a very nice uh, sentence about uh, Kulhas and his commentary. Uh, it was very important to me when I read also this sentence that from all the mega structural works he chose Jonah Friedman to uh, put it like an example of uh, something uh, I mean, uh, like the like the mega structure that doesn't um, that floats and that doesn't contradict or that doesn't uh, uh, land. That, doesn't that, land. that doesn't land in history that doesn't want the conflict uh, let's say um, I think there's some kind of sensibility on Jonah Friedman when he does this when they all do this project and I, I ask you why why uh, such a theore theoretical project that were so radical and they have this slide or, or this um, um, how to say um, that they don't want they, they don't want to they could do whatever they want they could erase all the city because it's something very utopic so you could say okay let's do another city but they conserve the ancient city and they superimpose a new density layer because maybe uh, well I give I, I, I give you the the why why being so utopic they are so uh, careful careful is the word with the history maybe it's a, a beginning of a new sensibility that you have but because it was not the final solution also if you see if you read the the, the three simple principles of la chetour mobile one is reversibility it's correct I mean, their structure, w they were thought to be rever reversible. So it was possible. As, think about it. If the inhabitants can change their house, they move it, you, you could do the same with, uh, with the megastructure. You could reverse it, enlarge it, but also take it away. Like, uh, it depends on the, on the context. So that was uh, one of the, th the principal uh, in, in so it's uh, quite simple, I think, the answer. Thank you. Basta. If there is no it's other question, it's getting exhibition. late. Huh? Well, you need a drink? Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you for your